So recently, Microsoft released controls for Power Apps that will help us build more responsive applications, in particular using the blank canvas template. Building responsive applications is incredibly important because we're, when we build applications, we're potentially rolling them out to a whole heap of different devices. And unfortunately, all those devices have different screen sizes, not just different devices like mobile phones and PCs, like even within the PC world, you're going to have different screen sizes. And Microsoft have made it a lot easier for, for us to build responsive applications. So on the screen, you can see that I've already built an example using those new Microsoft controls. If I run the application and I just take this screen and sort of start shrinking it down, my controls are responding to the screen change and they're wrapping and staying aligned exactly how I would expect them to stay aligned as a responsive app. Let me quickly run through an example of how to use these controls. So I've got now blank app opened and I'm going to run through that example quickly and how to build that from scratch. One of the things you could do is use one of these new screen types, which if we just open one up, take a look. This gives us pretty much what I'm about to show you how to build from scratch. Uh, these are all these new responsive controls. So you could go ahead and use one of these pre-existing um, screen types, but I kind of like doing things from scratch because it gives me a bit more control over it. And it also teaches me more on how to actually do this properly. So let me go ahead and start building this. So the first thing I really need is a is a container to encompass the whole screen. Now, if I just create a well one of the weird the other weird well actually let me back up a bit there's a couple of things we need to do as a bit of housekeeping first we go file advanced settings we want to make sure um this layer container switch is switched on that will be on by default for any new application you open you see here i didn't have to switch this on but any existing apps that you want to basically apply or retrofit this responsive design to you'll have to go in and switch this on now the other thing too under the screen size and orientation section you also want to make sure this is switched off now this is switched on by default by default if you don't switch this off when you're previewing your app you can't do that test where i showed you where i was reducing the screen so when you click play and you run your app you won't be able to see that working now when you publish it it'll respond correctly it's just when you're previewing so you definitely want this switched off while you're developing just so you can make sure your app is behaving exactly how you would like it to behave click on apply let's go back to our blank app so first up, I want to create my initial container that's going to encompass the entire screen. Now, this container needs to be a vertically aligned container because I want all my sub-containers that are going to make up my application to align vertically down the screen. So let's do that. Now, you would think that I would just be able to select that control, that new control from somewhere up here, like input, we can see container there. But in fact, it doesn't seem to be available. I can't find it in any one of these uh, menu op options. We need to go over to the plus symbol and go down to layout, expand that. And under vertical, here are our two new controls here, horizontal container and vertical container. So like I said, we want a vertical container first. I'm gonna make that the whole size of the screen. We wanna adjust it, justify it vertically, but we want to horizontally, we want everything to stretch. So to fill that whole container in, in everything that we put inside of here, we want it to fill that screen because we basically want all of our containers to fill up the entire area and i'm just going to call that responsive screen now under here so with that highlighted let me go back and show you so with that responsive screen highlighted i go in and i want to add a now i want to add a horizontal container now this horizontal container, we want, we don't want it to have a flexible height. We want, we want to set its actual height because we're, if this is just going to be our header and I'm just going to make that say 100 pixels high. 
call that header. Now next, let's highlight the responsive screen again because we want another container at that level to sit underneath the header. Go back. And I'm going to create another horizontal container. This one is going to be called body. Inside of body, I want a left and right column. So let's create, let's highlight the body container back into layout, create a horizontal. Let's yes, create a horizontal. I'm going to call that left. And let's highlight body again. Let's create another horizontal container. And you can see that because of our, we're nesting that inside of the body container, that left and right container underneath there have aligned themselves horizontally. And there's another setting here called flexible width. So what we're, what we tell, what we're telling the application here is that we want this to be fill up half of the proportion of its parent container. So if I were to do, if I were to say, I want this to the right hand column to take up two of two. You see how this automatically readjusts. So now it's saying this is now two thirds of the parent container. Now, if we go back up to our responsive screen container, all the way up the top, this top container, I want to create another control. It's going to be another horizontal control. And this one, I don't want to have flexible height either. Just want this to be also 100, let's say 50. I'm going to call this footer to make this clearer to show you what's going on here as well. Let me change the background colors to blue there. And let's go sort of orangey color there. Now in our header, I'm going to add a couple of controls on 50. Perfect. And I just made my, I, I just made my image 200 width. So it just looks a little bit bigger on the screen. Now the next thing I want to add is just a label and my, my res response, responsive app. Great. Now I'm going to make this. On the other hand, a flexible width because I want it to use up the rest of the space inside of that header container. And I will, let's just change that font size to something a bit bigger. Also want to align that text in the center. I think that looks a bit better. Up at the header, let's change the color of the background here as well, just so it also makes things a bit obvious to see of what's happening. All right, gray's, no, gray's not the best. Yep, go blue. Now on the footer, let's insert a label. And this label, I'm just gonna say Chino does stuff 2020. Let's make that also flexible width. Because there's only one control in the footer, it's going to take up the whole space. Okay, so let's um, let's add some controls here to the left and right panel, just so now we can test the responsiveness of how this is going to work. So on the left hand side, let's grab icon. So we've got the left container highlighted. Click rectangle one. Yeah, I think that's an okay color to use. And let's just paste 
Right, I've pasted six here. So you can see that they're, uh, they are just rolling straight out of that container because on that left-hand container, I do not have the wrap set. So if I click wrap, now everything will be contained inside of that, that flexible width or that width that that column is or that container is going to take up. And if it goes beyond that width, it's just going to wrap to the next line, which is effectively how we want our controls to respond. So let's grab another one of these. I'm just going to copy that. And in the right container, let's add some more. And again, we're not wrapping there either. So if I highlight the right container, click wrap. Okay. So the other, the other, some cool other settings that we can set here. So we can see our controls. Now we might want to set an automatic space between each control. This is defined under this gap option here. So if I have the left hand control highlighted, select gap, I might say I want a five pixel gap between each control and it will automatically set that up for us. Do the same for the right. Now, the great thing is too, because we put all of these in containers, we can do this at every level. So if we go all the way up to our responsive screen, we can also set a gap of five. So now we've got this nice little gap between our header, our left and right control, our left and right container, and our footer. Although let's change that footer color because and it's a bit hard to see. Okay, that's perfect. So now we can see that gap in the footer as well. So the other thing we can do, because we've got our body container, we can also set a gap here that will split up our left and right containers that are contained underneath our body. So now we're setting all these really cool sort of layout options inside of our application. Let's quickly run that. So we can see our app is responding, but something sort of strange is happening here. We're not filling the whole screen. So what's happened here? So we've got our first container that we, if you remember when I first put that on the screen, I just dragged that across to whatever this particular screen was set to. But obviously when we're actually running the app, the screen is not necessarily going to be this size. So we must set a, an initial value based on our screen size for our responsive screen or our responsive container that contains everything in it. So if we go down to height, so currently we've got a fixed value of 768, but what we actually want is parent height. And for our width, we want parent width what this will do now it'll always base our application on whatever the parent screen size is doing now if we run you can see our application fills our entire screen and we can minimize and maximize and it's responding perfectly so as you can see, super, super easy to build a responsive application in your Power App, something you're probably going to want to implement in all your applications moving forward. Hey, it's just me at the end of this video to remind you to click the like button if you like this video, subscribe to stay up to date with everything that's happening on this channel. I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.